live from Las Vegas, it's The Cube, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Good morning, welcome back to The Cube. Lisa Martin, live at AWS reInvent day two of theCUBE's coverage. I'm with Stu Miniman. And Stu and I are pleased to welcome a couple of guests from our old friend, Dell EMC. To my immediate left is Joe Caradona, the VP of Engineering Technology. Welcome to theCUBE. Good to be here. And then one of our alumni, we've got Bob <laughs> Ganley, Senior Consultant, Cloud Product Marketing. Welcome back. Thank you, glad to be here. So guys, here we are at AWS reInvent with 60 plus thousand people all over the strip here. Good show. We know Dell Technologies, Dell EMC well, big friends of theCUBE. Joe, Dell, AWS? Yeah. What's going <laughs> on? You guys are here. Apparently cloud is a thing. <laughs> you know? I've heard that. I, I think I've seen a sticker. <laughs> yeah, you've seen a sticker. Over the last year we've been busy rolling out new cloud services. I mean, look around, right? It's important to our customers, right, that we can deliver hybrid cloud solutions to them that are meaningful to them and to help them get their workloads to the cloud and be able, be able to uh, migrate and move between clouds and, and data center. Yeah, Joe, may, maybe expand a little on this. So we, we watched when VMware made the partnership announcement with AWS a couple of years ago, it sent ripples through the industry and yeah. VMware has had a large presence at this show. We, we've seen a lot of announcements and movement with Dell, Dell Technologies, Dell EMC over the last year or more, but Dell's, this is the first year that Dell's actually exhibiting here, so help explain for audience a little bit that dynamic with you know, leveraging VMware and also what Dell is bringing to this ecosystem. Yeah, sure. I mean, the way we think about it is it's really a multi-level stack. You have you know, the application layer and you got the data layer. So applications with VMware, we're focusing on enabling applications, whether they're VMs or containerized now, right? Be able to move those to the cloud, move them on-prem. Same is true for data. And data is actually the harder part of the problem, in my opinion, right? <laughs> uh, because data has, it has gravity. It's just big, it's hard to move, right? Uh, the principles of data in the cloud are, are the same as they are on-prem, where you, know, you still have to provide the high availability and the accessibility and the, and the security and the capacity and scale in the cloud as you would in the data center. And what we've been doing with our cloud storage services is bringing essentially our arrays as a service to the cloud. Yeah. Um, oh. you, you talked about some of those changes and absolutely data is at the center of everything. You know, yeah. we, we, we say, we've been saying for a long time, you talk about digital transformation, the outcome of that is if you're not letting data drive your decisions, you really haven't been successful there. Right. One of the biggest challenges beyond data is you know, the applications. Customers have hundreds if not thousands of applications. They're building new ones, they're migrating, they're you know, breaking them apart into microservices. You know, Bob, help us understand you know, where that intersects with, with what, what you're talking with customers about. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the reasons we're here is most organizations today are leveraging some public cloud services. And at the same time, most organizations have investment in on-prem infrastructure, right? I think we heard Andy say in the keynote yesterday, 97% of all enterprise IT spend is on-prem right now. So organizations are trying to figure out how to make those work together. And that's really what we're here to do, is help organizations figure out how to make their big on-prem investment work well with their public cloud investment. And AWS is clearly the leader there in that space. And so we're here to work with our uh, customers in order to help them really bridge that gap between public cloud and private cloud and make them work together well. And Bob, where does that conversation start? Because one of the other things that Andy talked about is that you know, his four essentials for transformation is it's got to start at the senior executive level. Strategic vision that's aggressively pushed down throughout the organization. Are you now having conversations at that CEO level for them to really include this value of data and apps as part of an overall business transformation? Yeah, definitely. If you think about it, it's all about people, process, and technology. And technology is only a small part of it. And I think that's the important thing about what Andy was saying in the keynote yesterday, is that it's about making sure that cloud as an operating model, not as a place, but as an operating model, gets adopted across your organization. And that has to have senior leadership investment, or in, uh, yeah, they have to be vested in this move. But, you know, both from an applications and a data perspective. Yeah. And on the technology side of things, I mean, you want to be able to give the developers the tools they need so they can develop those cloud-native applications. So, you know, in the on-prem sphere, 
You know, we have uh, ECS, our object store, right, kind of technology for bringing object to data center. Uh, we're plugging into Kubernetes every which way with VMware, right, we're developing CSI drivers across our uh, storage portfolio to be able to plug into these Kubernetes environments, and we're enabling for data and application migration across, across environments as well. Yeah, in many ways, Joe, we've seen there's a really disaggregation of how people build things. When I talk to the developer community, hybrid is the model that many of them are using, but yeah. it used to be nice in the old days is, I bought a box and it had all the feature <laughs> checklists that I wanted, now I, I need to yeah. put together all these microservices. So help us understand some of those services you know, that you, a, you it's provide. It's a little harder. I, I was yeah. it Andy Jassy said yesterday, these aren't your father's data requirements, yeah. right? And, and he's right about that because what's happening with, with data is it's, it's sprawling, right? You have them in your data center, you have it in clouds, you have it in multiple clouds, you have it in SaaS portals, you have it on file services and block services. And how do you wrap your arms around that? And especially when you start looking at use cases like, like data analytics and you start thinking about data sets, how do you manage data sets? How do I, maybe I had my data born on-prem and I want to do my analytics in the cloud, how do I even wrap my hands around data sets? So we have a product called Clarity Now that in fact does that. It indexes billions of files and objects across our storage, across our cloud services, across Amazon S3, across third party uh, NAS systems as well. And you can get a single pane of glass to see where your files and your objects reside. You can tag it, you can search upon it. You can create data sets based on search on your tags and your metadata uh, to then operate on those data sets. So the rules, data's being used in new and different ways. They need new ways to manage it, and these are some of the solutions that we're bringing to market. You mentioned um, multi, multi-cloud. I wanted to chat about that. We know it's not a word that AWS likes. Can we say that here? <laughs> On the cube, absolutely. This is the cube, exactly. <laughs> but the reality is, as we talk to, and Stu knows this well, most CIOs say, we've inherited this mess of multi-cloud, often symptomatically, not as a strategic direction. Give this an overview of what Dell EMC, and I'll ask you both the same question, um, and, and Joe, we'll start with you. How are, you. how are you helping customers address whether they've inherited multi-cloud through M&A acquisition or developer choice? How do they really extract value from that data that they know yeah. there's business insights in here that can allow us to differentiate our business, but we have all of this sprawl? What's the answer for that? Well, some of that is clarity now that I was talking about, to be able to see your data. Because, I mean, half the battle is seeing your data, right? right? Be able to see it. Uh, also, you know, with MultiCloud, whether they inherited it or if it was intentional or not, you know, we're setting out, our, all our solutions are multi-cloud, right? You can run them anywhere. But not only that, the twist to multi-cloud is, well, what if you made your data available to multiple clouds simultaneously, right? And why would you want to do that? I mean, one reason we'd, we'd want to go that path is maybe you want to use the best services from each cloud. But you don't want to move your data around because again, it has gravity and it takes time and money and resources to do that. Through our cloud storage services, it's centralized. And you can attach to whatever cloud you want, right? So some of that is around taking advantage of that. Some of that is around data brokering. We, we heard Andy talk a little bit about that this morning. Um, where you may have data sets that you want to sell to your customers and they may be running in other clouds, right? Um, and then some of that is you may want to switch clouds due to the services they have, the economics, or perhaps even the requirements of your, of your applications. Yeah, and from an application perspective, for us it's really about consistency, right? So we, we say it's consistency in two ways, consistent infrastructure and consistent operations. And so when we talk about consistent infrastructure, we want to help organizations be able to take that virtual machine and move it where is the best place for it, right? So it's about right workload, right cloud, and you know, we talk about application portfolio analysis and helping organizations figure out what is that uh, set of applications that they have, what should they do with those applications, which ones are right to move to cloud, which ones should they not invest in and kind of let retire, right? Yep. Um, and so that's another aspect of sort of that people in process thing that we talked about earlier, helping organizations look at that application portfolio and then take that uh, consistent infrastructure, use the multiple clouds with that, and then consistent operations, which is a single management control plane that can help you, uh, you know, have consistency between the way you run your on-prem and the way you run your public cloud. Yeah. And, and give them the freedom to choose the cloud they want 
for the workload they want. And is that, is that the, the data level where the differences between, so we'll say the public cloud providers is most exposed? In term, is it at the data layer where the differences in, we'll say AWS versus its competitors, is that where the differences between the features and the functionalities is most I, exposed? I think so. I think you know, one place that we think the public cloud is weakened is, is file, right? File workloads. And one of the things we're trying to do is bring consistent file, whether it's on-prem or across the clouds, you know, through with our cloud storage services in Isilon, right, and the scale and the, and the throughput that those systems can provide, bringing consistent file services, whether it's NFS and SMB or even HDFS, right, or the snapshotting capabilities, and as, as equally as important, right, that native replication capabilities across these environments. I wonder if we could talk a little bit about the, some of the organizational changes. The, the transformation was one of the key takeaways that Andy Jassy was you know, talking about in his three-hour uh, keynote yesterday. Um, you know, we've, we've watched for more than a decade now the role of IT compared to the business, and you know, we know that it's not only does IT need to respond to the business, but that data discussion we had better be driving the business, yeah. um, because if you're not leveraging your data, your, your competition definitely will. I want to get your opinion as to just kind of the, 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 the positions of power and who you're talking to and you know, what, what, what are some of the successful companies doing uh, to help lead uh, the, the, this type of you know, uh, change? I, I'll go. I, I, think, um, I think IT and business are coming together more. The lines are kind of blurring there. Um, and IT's being stretched into new directions now. They have to serve customers with new demand, so you know, whether it's managing storage arrays or servers or VMware environments, now they're being pushed into things like now managing uh, analytics kind of environments, right? And all the tools associated with that, whether it's you know Cassandra or 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 um, you know or or a TensorFlow, you know, be able to stretch and, and be able to provide the kind of services that that the business requires. Yeah, and, and up the stack too. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it, when you talk about the fact that business and IT need to work together, it's kind of like an uh, obvious statement, right? Uh, what that really means is that there needs to be a way to help organizations get to re re responding more quickly to what the needs of the business are. It's about agility, it's about the ability to respond quickly, so you, know, you see organizations moving from waterfall process for development to agile, and you see that being supported by cloud-native architectures, and organizations need to take and be able to do that in a way that preserves the investments that they have today. So most organizations are on this journey from physical to virtual to infrastructure as a service to container as a service and beyond, and they don't want to throw away those investments that they have in existing virtualization and existing skill sets, and so what we're really doing is helping organizations move to that place where they can adopt cloud native while bringing forward those investments they have in traditional infrastructure. And so, you know, we think that's helping organizations work better together, both from a technology and a business perspective. Yeah. And, and as far as the kind of people we talk to, I mean, data science is growing and growing. They're becoming, data scientists are becoming more part of the conversation. CIOs as well, right? I mean, behind all this, again, is that data that we come and keep coming back to. Um, they have to ensure the governance of that data, right? That it's being uh, controlled and it's within compliance. Yeah. So we started off the conversation talking about that this was Dell's first year. So yeah. you know, 60, 65,000 here. There's a sprawling ecosystem. You know, one of one of the largest ones here. Uh, what do you want to really you know emphasize? Give us the final takeaway as to how people should think about Dell Technologies in the, the the cloud ecosystem. Yeah, I think you know, we know our customers want to be able to leverage the cloud. It, the kind of conversation we have, we have with customers are more around. How can I use the cloud to optimize you know, my business? And that's going to vary on a workload by workload basis. We feel it's our job to, to arm the customer with the tools they need, right? To be able to you know, have hybrid cloud architectures, to be able to have the freedom to run the applications where they want, uh, consume infrastructure in the way they want it to be consumed, uh, and we're there for them. Yeah, uh, you know, I think it's really about a couple of things. One is uh, trust, and the other one is choice. So if you think about it, you know, organizations need to move into this cloud world in a way that uh, brings forward those investments that they've made. Dell EMC is the number one provider of hyperconverged infrastructure, of servers, and we can help organizations understand that cloud operating model and how to bring 
uh, the private cloud investments that they have today forward to work well with the public cloud investments that they're making, clearly. So it's really about trust and then choice of how they implement. Right, trust is a big deal, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I mean, we're the number one storage vendor for a reason, right? Our customers trust us with their data. Well, Joe, Bob, thank you so much for joining Stu and me on theCUBE, sharing with us what you guys are doing, Dell, AWS. Thanks for having the us. The trust and the choice that you're delivering to your customers. We'll see you at Dell Technologies World. We'll see Absolutely. you here next year. All right, All right. you got it. <laughs> All right, for our guests and for Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE, day two of our coverage of AWS reInvent 19. Thanks for watching. Oh.